This is the Moza R12 wheelbase. It's a touch under 600 quid, and for that you get force feedback that has, in one word, clout. I've been using it for the past few months, and here are my thoughts to help you decide if this is a wheelbase for you. Before we get into it, if you want an article version of this video so you can read it at your own pace, check the description for a link to that. You'll also find some places to buy the R12 listed there too. They are affiliate links that give me a small commission if you go on to make your purchase, which helps support the work put into this channel at no added cost to you and thanks to everyone who does so, it makes a difference. Moza provided this R12 free for review, but be assured this review is my opinion. Nobody but me has any hand in what I say and I do make valid criticisms of Moza at times, so hopefully you take my words sincerely. This review will cover good points and bad points, so stick around. Questions and comments are welcome. First let's address the main question, is it worth the money? Well the answer is pretty boring because yes, it is, but by that I mean it's worth precisely what Moza are charging for it. It's neither excellent or terrible value, it's just square on target for the cost. In the UK, the 12Nm R12 will cost a touch under 600 quid. For context, an 8Nm CSL DED works out to around 400 quid now. A 10Nm Simagic Alpha Mini is 600 quid, so it does beat the Alpha Mini on pure power per pound spent. The R12's little brother, the 9Nm R9, is a touch under 400 quid. So essentially the R12 will cost you nearly 50% more than an R9 for around an additional 30% of max force. This leads on to my next point. Should you buy an R12 or is it too much? If you want a wheelbase that can cover all varieties of sim racing you might care to dabble in without spending full premium direct drive money then the R12 is a good choice. 12 Nm or above is the point at which you have sufficient power for everything for people of all ages. You can go higher and push it beyond all doubt, but 12 is great. If you're simply all about road and circuit racing with lightweight wheels like the Moza KS seen here, the R9 might be enough, but if you are into all sorts of racing like drifting or rallying and you want to use all kinds of full size wheels, the R12 is a better choice to ensure you've got power available to do all things well. Is Moza a decent choice overall? Well now that they've been around just long enough to see that they seem to be in this for the long term, that question just boils down to, do you like the look of what they sell at the price they're selling it? I wouldn't have touched their earlier designs of a barge pole because it looked like something Mr. Tumble would use. But they've had a makeover since then. Their KS wheel for example is superbly handsome and functional for the money, so they are at least on an upward trajectory if this is a glimpse of the future. So what about the Moza R12's entire purpose? It's force feedback. It's definitely strong. What do I mean by strong? Well, I'm a guy in my mid 30s with a large dog and a kid that currently needs throwing around a lot and I can still have the wheel twisted involuntarily from my hands if it starts to really fight me. Such as in big crashes, a fatal curb strike or a tank slapper that can't be caught. That's not to say that strong force feedback causes crashes, but you do race more carefully when you're not sure if you're about to get a stern word from the wheel, and if you ask me, that adds to the immersion factor of sim racing, you enjoy it more if you feel that risk. If you are currently using something like a Logitech G923 or Thrustmaster T150 or T300, the R12 is going to feel quite unbelievable. It's fast and agile, with more force comes an expectation of more agility and responsiveness through the wheel and expectations are met. It's noticeably sharp and punchy when it's told to be. Simulators like R-Factor 2 and ACC, which are capable of a flood of high frequency force feedback signals, will treat you well paired with an R12 and to me the wheel feels completely smooth doing it as well. It's quiet. The fanless design used here in the R12 is now commonplace amongst direct drive wheels below the upper top end. And the excellent quick release system means that it's basically silent in operation and that too is normal for direct drives these days. The only thing that's going to be making noise here is whatever the R12 is bolted to as it takes the beating when you stack it. It's small. The R12 is the biggest of the cuboid wheelbases Moza have made so far, but it's still only a little bit bigger than the R5, which has less than half the power, and the size difference lies only in the length of the midsection. The smaller the base, the better because it makes fitment easier in every way. It runs cool. Having no fan inside, combined with a small size, combined with no apparent ventilation, does make you wonder, how does that stay cool? 
Well, much like the Fanatec CSL DD wheelbases, Moses R12 and below dissipate heat through the casing. Moses software has the ability to automatically restrict force feedback strength if heat builds up too much, but during my whole time with the R12, heat has never been an issue, nor have I sensed any loss of force feedback at any point, nor has the casing ever been more than merely warm, and I have used it for plenty of rallying and silliness with high forces. So long as you haven't dressed it up in a tea cozy, then you shouldn't really have issues. But that failsafe to ramp down the force feedback if things do get too hot is still good to know about. It's looking good so far, but there are some things about the R12 which do need to be given a second thought. Firstly, it's the first of Moses wheelbases that uses a purely physical connection to communicate with a steering wheel instead of Bluetooth as has been used previously in the R9 and R5 etc. This is a good move overall for reliability, wireless can never beat wired and I'm all for it. But the knock on effect is that the R12 is not backwards compatible with the earlier Moza V1 wheels that do use Bluetooth to talk to the wheelbase. This means that if you were an early adopter of Moza and happened to already have a selection of wheels from the early days and they weren't that cheap, you may come to find that some of them can't be used with the R12. So to those customers, this is essentially Moza saying thanks for being an early supporter, but unfortunately we go in a different direction now, sorry. You'll also need to keep this in mind if you go scouting for wheels on the second hand marketplace, don't accidentally buy a GS V1 steering wheel by mistake, as it won't work on your R12, only the GS V2 will. Compatibility is fully outlined on the Moza site at least. Despite Bluetooth being done away with for base to wheel communication, you can still link your phone to your wheelbase with the Pit House app via Bluetooth, so that function is still around. When it comes to physical design, I'm not a massive fan of Moses cuboid bases. They look a little bit aesthetically unrefined in my opinion. I'm not really a fan of the body shape or the rough matte paint finish. I don't like the use of the Moza parent company logo on the body. I know it's Moses original logo, but the Moza racing logo is a lot more relevant to what we have here. I don't know, maybe I'm just clutching at straws and being mean. At least it's all black and doesn't take styling liberties like their larger wheelbases do. It's always a good move to leave the visual statements to the customer. To conclude, the R12 is maybe the most boring wheelbase Moza has made yet because it's priced exactly correctly and doesn't really have any distinct weaknesses. It's as powerful as any normal sim racer has any need for. The price is neither a bargain or ridiculous. It's neither a premium product nor a slapdash knockoff. It's just smack bang in the middle in terms of value for money and because it covers everything really well, I doubt you're likely to upgrade from it for any reason other than change for change's sake. There's no real call for glowing praise, sharp criticism, jokes or interesting side points, but when you're spending real money, sometimes that's exactly what you want to hear. And thanks for watching, I hope this has been useful for you in some way, but if there's still anything unanswered in your mind, pop a comment underneath and I'll answer. And don't forget to check the description for links on where to buy, as well as numerous other useful brands and discounts. Cheers again!